Okay. Uh, hi guys, welcome. Uh, so this session is on uh, tooling for observability. So it's basically I go through like saying like what's observability and how WC2 has used several tools to do observability. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, what is observability? So observability, the term mainly came from uh, control theory. So the, the rough idea is basically it's uh, basically uh, a measure of how uh, well the internal states of a system uh, can be inferred from the external outputs we get. Like uh, basically if you have a system like we want to see okay, how the things are working, uh, the status of it and so on by uh, like looking at the things that we get, the like information we get out of it. So, um, and the other thing is basically uh, monitoring is not the same as observability. So basically monitoring actually comes under observability. When you say mo monitoring, it's uh, bas basically saying uh, how the system is uh, working, uh, whether it's working as expected and so on. And observable is just an attribute of the system, saying, okay, how observable the thing is. Like it's same as uh, like performance, testability, maintainability, and so on. So it goes in that manner. So it's used in two different contexts, actually, the two words. Um, and uh, so basically, how do you do observability? So it's mainly achieved via instrumentation. That's, that basically means uh, like sort of augmenting your system with some code. Uh, to observe certain uh, uh, areas. So, uh, <clears throat> so as such, so the WS2 products are observable via some of the tools we already have, some are open source tools, some are uh, tools that we built, and some other uh, like uh, uh, external tools that are available. Uh, so there are two kinds of uh, uh, instrumentation we can do. Uh, one is white box instrumentation and other is black box. So white box is basically, uh, uh, as it means, like uh, if you know white box testing and so on, it's the same idea. So that means you put like explicit code into your system to uh, to uh, basically observe a certain thing. That means to to <coughs> follow a metric or anything like that. So uh, that means you explicitly know what's happening in the system. So you, you can get uh, information out of that. And black box means, so uh, you don't design the thing uh, beforehand, but later on you look at the system from outside and figure out, okay, what's happening, and so on. So that's the difference between white box and black box uh, instrumentation. And uh, the other thing is, uh, so if you uh, take a thing like availability, uh, so in a system, uh, the main thing, the main most important thing, if you consider versus observability and availability, sometimes uh, uh, observability can be more important. That is, uh, even if your system is uh, uh, very high in availability, uh, that may not be what you want. Like you may want to see. Uh, are your requests actually getting uh, served in time? If, are they working properly? And so on. So in that uh, kind of a scenario, it's better to be fully observable than to uh, con concentrate on the other, other features. So that's why like, people are more and more into like, uh, always on uh, observability uh, uh, features, like uh, to be able to uh, always put on these features in production. Like, uh, people tend to do that more because when something goes wrong, uh, so you can immediately go debug the system, trace your request, and so on, and uh, get to the root of the course uh, rather than doing it later offline. So it's always better to uh, be able to have that feature uh, versus the other uh, possible uh, options you will have. <coughs> uh, so this is uh, what I said, so it's performance engineering. So again, so it's better to uh, have the system observable to be able to easily troubleshoot the system. Uh, so uh, the, there are three uh, factors in observability. The, the main uh, three sections that are made up 
uh, uh, when observable is concerned, that is uh, logging, uh, then matrix monitoring, and tracing. So uh, logging is basically when you, when you have like uh, individual discrete events. So you basically log them, and you will look at them individually, like what's happening in the system. And matrix monitoring is basically the data that, are, that can be aggregated. So if you have things like uh, requests coming in, uh, the, the, uh, the response times, and so on. So you can uh, <coughs> get other stats like, OK, the number of requests in the past hour, uh, an aggregated metric, uh, the mean uh, response time, and so on. The things can be, that can be aggregated forced into uh, this section. And the other thing is uh, the tracing. So tracing is basically when you have different data events uh, that can be correlated to create a, uh, a continuous trace. So when you have multiple events, and if it can be correlated together to create a single uh, uh, continuous set of events, uh, then that becomes a trace. So that's what we mean by distributed tracing. And uh, so let's look at some of the tools we use for observability. So uh, uh, mainly, I have listed some of the things that we use at WSO2. And uh, so starting with logging. So the Elastic Stack uh, is a very famous stack that people use. Uh, I'll get into more details on uh, the parts that it has. Uh, in metrics, uh, so uh, we have two different categories, application metrics and system metrics. Uh, so in the application uh, level, uh, we can use a WSO2 analytics server our own product to uh, do this, and another commercial product such as AppDynamics. And uh, for system metrics, uh, we have uh, Isinga and CloudWatch, so if you use AWS products and so on. And then for distributed tracing, again, we have AppDynamics we can use uh, for that uh, <coughs> requirement. And also, again, WS2 Analytics Server, and also other open tracing vendors. So open tracing is basically a standard used for tracing, and there are multiple vendors that implement the standard. So uh, let's look at uh, logging a bit more closely. Uh, so this is basically mainly done with uh, uh, white box instrumentation. Basically, in your code, you will put your own log statements in different, different uh, places. Uh, we have want to log a specific uh, event or like to log specific information. Uh, so, uh, so in logging we have different states, uh, different severities, and so on. We have we uh, give it with log levels, uh, as you would all obviously know. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, there are different standards and uh, uh, different uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, logging facades we use, uh, like I said, for J and so on. Uh, like uh, people use for these logging uh, requirements. And uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, main one of the main uh, platforms you use for the logging is the Elastic Stack. Uh, so in the Elastic Stack, they have a layered approach in uh, like uh, recording these logs, uh, starting from uh, log uh, uh, retrieval, uh, which they have with this uh, bits concept. These are basically agents that run in uh, specific servers uh, that can uh, publish events, like, for example, file logs and so on. Uh, and it goes to another layer called uh, the log processing place with log stash, uh, where you can get the data and uh, format to a specific uh, way and uh, then forward it to uh, an indexing system. So indexing system is done by Elasticsearch where it indexes and basically stored, stores the data. Uh, so then comes the visualization part for the data you have. Uh, that is done by uh, the visualize layer uh, implemented by Kibana, so which you can create your own custom uh, dashboards, you can save them, and so on. So that's basically how the Elastic Stack works. So there are other uh, similar solutions as well, which basically uh, follows a similar architecture when it comes to logging. Um, and this is a high-level architecture on how things work. Uh, you can see like the beats, uh, how they connect to the log stash, the processing, storing, and finally, uh, the, the visualization. 
So these are <coughs> basically uh, uh, Kibana screenshots of how the visualization happen. So it has a sample on how it monitors some uh, WS2 logs. And then uh, we comes, come to uh, metrics monitoring. So, uh, so our own uh, WS2 analytics server powered by uh, DAS and uh, stream processor. Uh, so it has the capability to do the metric processing because we have our own uh, real-time analytics engine. And it can do also do uh, some batch processing also, uh, coupled with uh, predictive analysis. Uh, so this can be used to uh, do uh, like the aggregates I mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, sort in a database, and then do further <coughs> filtering and aggregations in the uh, presentation layer. So uh, that is possible with our WS2 analytics server. Uh, so uh, how it's used in some of the existing products uh, uh, are basically in our W3 API manager, we have uh, out-of-the-box uh, statistics that it exposes, like request response, false statistics, uh, latency, uh, availability APIs, and many more uh, others. Uh, and also the same kind of stats are there in W3 EI as well, uh, our enterprise integrator. So, uh, uh, so basically, it integrates with our WS2 analytics server and do this processing. So you can see uh, some of the dashboards we have in our API manager solution. And so this is a screenshot of the EI, where we have the stats and some uh, uh, tracing uh, views as well in the uh, same product. And then we come to... Uh, um, Basically, application system matrix using uh, App Dynamics. Also, it's a commercial product uh, used to basically uh, collect the uh, matrix, uh, the the matrix values from uh, a source uh, application using uh, agents and do the processing. And it basically is a uh, all-in-one application that does metrics tracing and many more. So again, uh, similar kind of uh, stats, request response, statistics, uh, even uh, other system level uh, stats like uh, JVM, heap size, threads, and so on. So those are all supported in the same product. <clears throat> so this is a dashboard of uh, AppDynamics. So, uh, so one of the nice things in AppDynamics, it, it can automatically create the, uh, your system topology using the data that is there. So if you just run there, uh, agent in your system, it will automatically detect how the communication is done, how the uh, nodes communicate with each other, and automatically create this visualization for you. And uh, also for system metrics, uh, another thing we use is AWS CloudWatch. And it's mainly useful if you are using a lot of AWS-based uh, in instances. So uh, it can do things like uh, check the availability of like open server ports, servicer disk users, CPU, and so on. So those can be done easily using uh, this service as well. So some of the dashboards <coughs> that it provides. And another uh, service is uh, Isinga. So uh, that also can be used for the system metrics. It gives similar things. So if you want to have a, like a private deployment, you can use this product as well. And then we come to uh, distributed tracing. So uh, again, as I said, it's basically for collecting correlated events throughout your uh, request path systems, uh, different components, and so on. So um, the first product, so our WS Analytics server has this uh, feature, uh, basically for request tracking. So basically what we do is, we attach a unique ID from the initiating request, and basically we propagate, through, uh, propagate throughout the uh, request path throughout the, all the components and the servers. And uh, this is the uh, feature that we use mainly in EI and API Manager uh, for uh, its tracing capabilities. Uh, so you will see like uh, in API Manager and EI, like for when we have uh, multiple uh, uh, services APIs when they uh, have multiple flows. All this can be tracked each level going into the 
you can drill down into the small granularities and see the see all the details in the messages. <coughs> so this is a view of the uh, the tracing view we have in the WS Analytics server. So as you can see, uh, each of the messages in a single trace is just listed like that, and each message you can drill down and see all the individual attributes of the uh, uh, messages. So again, uh, the same thing is available in AppDynamics as well. So as I said, it can automatically uh, uh, figure out the topology and see uh, how the communication is done between the components, nodes, and so on. And uh, another uh, standard that's uh, uh, like uh, in the rise is open tracing. So, uh, so there are uh, different implementation of this open tracing uh, providers we call as uh, tracers. So Jaeger, Zipkin, uh, and also WS Stream Processor are providers. So uh, WS Stream Processor with uh, version 4.2, it's it supports a fully uh, compatible open tracing uh, trace implementation. And uh, also our products, so WS API Major 2.5, the micro gateway supports open tracing. And so it can also emit uh, open tracing events to all the supported traces as well. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so the future, so um, uh, the, in the future, so we are planning to uh, embed open tracing support for all the W2 products we have. So as I mentioned earlier, like the API Major Micro Gateway, we are implementing uh, the tracing standard for all the products, like EI and all the compatible uh, scenarios. So, um, so after that, then there's no uh, custom uh, development effort needed to support this with the other open tracing compatible products. Then it can work with any provider like Zipkin, Jaeger, and so on. <clears throat> so uh, basically, in conclusion, uh, when you have observable system, uh, basically, what it lets you do is uh, like always give you answers on the like the state of the system, so you can like answer questions that are given by like developers, DevOps users, and so on on like what's going on and so on, and have a, a rich in-depth uh, like a mental model on uh, how the thing is working and the status of it, and uh, so and basically observability is mainly again. Uh, logging, matrix monitoring, and distributed tracing. So if you have implemented all these three aspects, basically, then you will have an observable system. And uh, yeah, so then finally, uh, currently and in the future, W3 products will be, and can be and will be observable uh, by integrating them with various tools, such as uh, things from open source software, uh, WS Analytics Solutions, Jaeger, Zipkin, and also commercial products as well, like AppDynamics, AWS CloudWatch, and so on. So um, uh, that's basically where we are hoping to go. Uh, so in the future, uh, all the WS services products will be fully observable uh, 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 to have have a better, like a uh, uh, monitored and, and, and uh, to have a stable system, basically, in the long run. Uh, so that is basically it. Uh, if you have any questions, I would like to take. Yes. So when you talk about analytics server versus a commercial APM product like AppDynamics, are you presenting that as uh, redundant choices where you would pick one versus the other, or are there scenarios where you might need both, or you know, what's the distinction yeah. that you would say between those tools? Yes. Uh, so at the moment, our analytics server uh, works uh, uh, good in specific scenarios, so it doesn't do all the things uh, that that can be done by other application performance monitors, like uh, as I said, uh, uh, AppDynamics and so on. So, like uh, currently, uh, we are good at the uh, matrix monitoring, the real-time analytics, and then the open open tracing aspects. So, those are the things that are supported well currently in the product. 
So for those scenarios, uh, our W3 Analytics server works well. So any other things, if you want to uh, like get uh, tracing capabilities and so on, like uh, without doing much, without doing like uh, some custom uh, like dashboards, uh, like some custom code and so on, then a thing like App Dynamics can be uh, used easily, probably, because it has a much uh, at the moment it has a much richer uh, uh, clients, uh, instrumentation agents and so on that can plug into the systems. So, uh, so I would say uh, for different scenarios, uh, these uh, uh, products uh, will do well. So, uh, but uh, the idea is we will keep on improving the W3 Analytics server also uh, to uh, do overall do the things well. Uh, so that's the idea. So I have one follow-up question, if, yeah. if I may. Um, do you have any partnerships with uh, vendors like AppDynamics to make it easier to uh, configure WSO2? Um, I've had some experience with it, and you know it can be challenging to set it up correctly. So I was wondering yeah. if you're trying to improve that. Yes, uh, we are actually pursuing some uh, options. So we are in contact with uh, multiple uh, like uh, providers as such. And uh, yes, in the future we will have like more. <clears throat> direct support uh, with those products, like having uh, custom agents, dashboards, and so on. So currently, we have done some. But yes, that's also in the plans on uh, integrating more product, uh, like closely with our products. So yes, that will come in the future. Thank you. All right. Yes. You'd mentioned that the analytics server supports uh, getting real-time stats out of proxy services, APIs. Can that drill down into the sequence level as well? Yes, yes. Uh, so that's already available in the uh, analytics server. So uh, basically what we had this with what we call uh, the, the product analytics, so the API image analytics and the EI analytics. So what they have is uh, those analytics come as another profile uh, with the product. So if you get EI, it's already available. Uh, so you start it up. You start up the EI analytics profile. Basically, that's another version of the W3 analytics server. And from that, yes, we can drill down into the level of uh, each request, property level, and so on. So that level of information is available. Excellent. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Any other questions? So we have some time left for more questions. Um, so uh, if uh, I'm writing my own sort of microservices and I would like to have this observability, and how much uh, uh, WS2 analytics server that I can use? Do you have facility for the, you know, uh, the custom app or services? Sorry, well, what's the last part? Uh, so, so if I'm writing my own app services and yeah. then I uh, just want to uh, leverage your analytics servers for the uh, processing yeah. and the uh, alerting and uh, uh, visualization, yeah. is that a way that I can just easily uh, pump yes. my data to your server? Uh, yeah, analytics so uh, in our analytics server, so we have uh, data publishers for various kind of uh, languages and systems. So we have uh, like uh, so when you say microservice, if you are using uh, our own like MSF4J or any system like that, we have inbuilt functionality. And also, uh, if you are using Ballerina, our uh, the new language we are uh, promoting for microservices and cloud native uh, development. Uh, so that has again has inbuilt features for observability. Like that, that comes with the language itself, so you don't have to do anything extra. So it'll uh, emit those uh, required uh, information uh, for you, <clears throat> and of course, it also has a use API. Uh, but the idea is, uh, so the other idea is, we are uh, going more towards like a observable by default approach. So that means <clears throat> without doing much uh, work. Uh, like 90% of the things you will need will come by default and will be observed. So uh, that's the strategy we are moving towards. Uh, so uh, those features are available, like, as I said, Ballerina, MSF4J, and so on. But if you want to go low down uh, to the publisher level also, we have uh, multiple uh, 
uh, client APIs as well. So that's all supported uh, through the system.